Chucky B. Hey, this is the LG G6. A smartphone release is in 2016. By the end of its release, it was an amazing phone and it, it was easy to recommend. Time passed, new technology emerged every day. Today is the era of bezel lace display, flip up cameras, teardrop notch, hole punch display, and in screen fingerprint, and super high refresh rate displays. And the list goes beyond that. Keep in mind, this video is released in 2019, so can it? The G6 still keep it up with today's standards. And more importantly, is it still easy to recommend today? Yo, what is up guys? My name is Kensei Inoso, I do take videos every week, so if you're into that, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Let me ask you a question. What is the first thing people often look when they buy a new phone? Brand apart, it is the asset. A good software experience and a good battery life. At least for me, that's the most important point whenever I buy a new product. Let's take a look at the design. The LG G6, lately renamed LG G6, thank you, won't probably be the best if there was an aesthetic contest, but Anything on phone like this is will definitely turn some eyes. No curved screen or other complicated design, it is surrounded by an aluminum frame on the outside and aluminum well polished that feels comfortable in the end. But don't forget, aluminum is not steel, so it dents sometimes quite easily. So it is recommended to put a case on this phone or any phone for that matter. It has glass on the back, so wireless charging is available, but only with cheap wireless chargers because it doesn't support PMA and there is a weird choice for the Gorilla glasses on the back and on the front. For people who are there who, who don't know, Gorilla Glass is a brand of chemically strengthened glass developed and manufactured by Koning. They are designed to be thin, light and damage resistant and are in, in their 6th generation. The real thing is there is 3 versions of Gorilla Glass on the phone. Gorilla Glass 3 on the front, Gorilla Glass 4 for the camera glass and Gorilla 5 for the back. So why is that? Why a multiple version of Gorilla? It is because when Gorilla Glass 3 was introduced, it was a significant upgrade because it offered increased flexibility compared to its predecessor, as well as a 40% increase in scratch resistance. Good! Gorilla Glass 4 arrived almost Two years later, offering a much thinner glass and provided a essentially the same durability as Gorilla Glass 3, so not much improvement here other than being able to make a much thinner screen. Gorilla Glass 5 come another year and a half later, adding improved impact resistance over its predecessor while maintaining a similar level of scratch resistance. Not a tragic improvement from the third generation to the fifth, but the combination of Gorilla Glass 5 and 4 might make decent enough sense using 4 on the camera and 5 on the front and the back. And yes, this smartphone is water resistant. The ingress rating is IP68, that means it can theoretically survive from dust and water for, for up to 1.5 meters for about an hour. But those are just numbers, don't ever intentionally stream with your phone if you care about them. So IP rating is not for, for this, instead if is there to prevent you from spending money fixing a water damaged smartphone. At the top, you'll find the regular microphone, either for noise reduction in calls or as a stereo mic when recording videos. The 3.5mm headphone jack with quad dock setup if you choose this readable device, or more on that later. At the bottom, another microphone, the USB-C port and the speaker grill. For the hardware and the software, it works a Snapdragon A21 with 4 cores clocked at 2.35GHz and backed up by 4 gigs of RAM and it starts with 32 gigs of internal storage. In Geekbench 4, it scored 1777 with single core usage and with 41,000 4137 with multi core score usage. In a real world scenario, the phone is pretty fast. Not as fluid as a Google Pixel or an iPhone 10, but it is definitely fluid. The UI is a bit dated, the icons are not super beautiful, and they could do a better job with the interface, but hey, it's Android, it's a choice. And to continue, I never had slowdown from using apps. 
except when I was updating apps from the Play Store and I wish RAM management was a little bit better but it still get the job done. Switching app is fast and playing games is good. The phone came with Android 7 Nougat and updated mine to Oreo but later this year LG will release Pi update for the G6 finger crossed that would be amazing. Let's attack the screen. It is using a 5.7 inches 1440 by 2880 HDR10 and Dolby Vision IPS technology. The screen brightness is good and color accuracy is good, sharpness is good, so you'll don't you you'll never have a problem with the screen. And the screen is using a 18 by 9 or 2.1 aspect ratio. That means the screen is longer than the more common 18 by 9 aspect ratio, reading text or editing documents, g gaming will be better but when watching videos you have to crop it a little bit. So the screen is up there with the best uh, IPS screen out there but if you want true blacks the way to go is AMOLED. And you may have noticed that the corners of the LG G6 are curved and while it looks fantastic aesthetically, there is an actual physical reason for the font of those curved corners. Apparently, LG decided to literally cut off the corners of the G6 displays because according to LG, when a font is dropped on its corner, the shock of that impact eats the display all in, in all in one spot. The corner especially on a bezel light phone. However, by cutting off the corners, the surface of impact becomes wider, thus reducing the chance that the display itself will shatter. That's pretty obvious and I'm glad that <laughs> LG found that. Audio capabilities of the smartphone are good enough. It has a single bottom speaker at the <laughs> bottom. It is loud enough and the quality is... Mm, okay. But certain versions of the smartphone have quad DAC available, that means there is 4 DAC converting your digital content to an analog signal, that means you have a better dynamic range, deeper bass and clearer audio experience when using a good pair of wired headphones. Unfortunately, it's whether wireless charging or better quad DAC audio when buying the G6. If you go for the wireless charging, you won't get the quad DAC and if you go for the quad DAC, you won't have wireless charge. About the camera, if you love recording videos with your smartphone or you want to have a reliable shooter, the G6 camera, oh, cameras, have your back. The first camera is a wide angle 13 megapixel core opening at f1.8. To explain this as fast as possible, 1.8 simply means that the camera will absorb more light than a lens opening at a f2.4 aperture. If you want more detail on that, make sure to ask for it in the comment section. The picture are detailed with good dynamic range and good color productions. And when you cannot feel everything or everybody in the same shot, there is a second camera module into play. It is a super wide angle lens up at the with the same 13 megapixel, but it only opens at f2.4. But it is wider and for photography expert like me, there is also manual photos and video modes. For still, you can trick the focus, shutter speed, white balance and exposure. When shooting videos you can do pretty, pretty the same thing but you can also adjust the mic gain, add a wind noise filter and apply exposure locking. Video footage can be captured up to 4K 16x9 at 30 frames per second or in full frame or in full HD at 60 FPS. For me, battery lives matters a lot, and the G6 is powered by a 3300mAh battery. In average, I get around 3 to 4 hours of screen on time, browsing internet, watching content on YouTube, but that's never and that, that, that's my utilization. Yours can be different if you're a gamer, if you're a photographer, if you spend all your day, all your day on social media, but at the end of the day, the battery life could be better even though it has a 3300mAh battery. But don't forget, it supports Qualcomm Quick Charge 3, which will let you charge it up to around 50% in 30 minutes if you have a quick charger. The LG G6 is still one of the best. No, it, it is not. So, if you are looking for the best, best bang for a buck, we are recommended. Nah. Now, for the, for the same price, you you can get a LG V30, a LG V30, 
35 and maybe if you're if you're more interested into Samsung smartphones you can go you can go for a Samsung Galaxy S8 or an used S9 yeah so that was it for today's video I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you on the next one